Happy New Year! It's that time when we all reflect and set resolutions, so what better time than now to create your own app using Bravo? Hey everybody, what's up? I'm Fergie, and in this video I'll show you how to clone a very well-known article sharing blogging app that you've probably used before. I've got the design ready in Adobe XD, so I'll go through exactly which Bravo tags you need to use to accomplish the same functionality. Okay, let's get started. So here we have a design in Adobe XD ready to go, and we're just gonna go through all of the Bravo tags that you need to replicate this clone yourself. So firstly, let's start with our social media login screen. You can see I have some buttons here to allow the users to sign in with any one of these socials or just with their emails. Or if they already have an account, they can just hit the sign in button. So let's go through the tags that we need to make these work. Firstly, we've got our Google button. So let me double click into my container group, expand this panel so you can see it here. And the tag for this one is action login Google OAuth2. For Facebook, it is action login Facebook. And for Apple, we have action login Apple. So this is how you can utilize those social media accounts to log in once you've set up the OAuth2 connections. And we'll do that in part two of this video. You will also need to add a very important tag to the artboard name. So you need to add page login. And this is so that Bravo knows that this is a login screen that allows the users to get access to your app. Next up, we have a notification kind of alert screen. And this is something that is just gonna pop up once the first time the user opens the application. So the, the way to make it do that is by using the Bravo tag intro once in the artboard name just here. Then on the screen, we have a little illustration about notifications, a bit of text to explain to the user exactly what notifications they'll receive. And then I have a couple of buttons here. And this is something that you can set up for once your app is live and available on the app stores. Next up, we have this all important home screen, and this is going to be designed a bit like a feed of articles. So we have a container here ready where we're going to put all of the elements that we need for displaying this preview of an article. So we have things like the author's name, the date that the article is from, uh, of course, the headline, and then we're also going to say how long it takes to read this article, any kind of um, hero image that is displayed with it, share button, and bookmarking, liking, favoriting. This is what I'm going to show you how to create today. Now, you can apply this to a like button or, as we'll do in this video, to a bookmark slash saved sort of functionality. But if you just want to do a like, then you can also apply the same technique. So of course, this screen is made up of a number of containers. The first one we have up here is our container top bar. Now this is just the name of our app and a little indication to the user of what they have selected to see in their feed. What types of topics are they following? And I've added in one here for if we wanted to sort the articles by a particular category or top stories or maybe by date or something. Then we have our actual article card itself. And of course we have a container for our nav bar. And the way that I am doing the nav bar is using a layer. Now using the layer tag means that this is going to kind of be sticky. It's gonna stay in this fixed position. So just remember that a layer is above everything else. So our content will sort of be scrolling from behind this nav bar and this will always stay in this fixed position at the bottom of the screen. All right, so let's get into the details. For our article card here, you can see we have a few things going on. I have quite a few text layers and shapes to contain things like the author's photograph. We then have, of course, the area, which is what tells Bravo how big this container needs to be. This is the size of the container and it's just an invisible layer. So you can turn off the fill and the border, put that transparency down to zero. It doesn't need any of those properties. Okay, and then I have our buttons down here that I've just grouped. So I've got an icon and a text because we're just using that as placement at the moment. We have a share icon, which is an SVG. 
So to make sure that this graphic works, because it is just a group of paths to draw this shape, we've got to make sure we call that component SVG. And then we have our bookmark slash save, whichever function you want this to be for your app. We have that important button here. So this is where we need to use the tag state set, and then you give it a name. So for me, the name is bookmarked. And within this group, if I open this up, you'll see I have two more groups. So if I hide this one for a minute, you'll see that this is the active state of this button. So when somebody clicks on this bookmark icon and this is bookmarked, this is what that is going to look like. So that means it is active. And then the default state, so this is before it's been clicked and selected, so this is not bookmarked. This default state here, you can see it's just the bookmark outline. So we need to include both of these two groups within this main group for this component to work. Firstly, our default is going to be state default. And then we're also going to add on the action remote because when our users tap on this icon, I want it to actually bookmark and save this article in our database. And from that, we can create the bookmarks page whereby all of these bookmarked articles will then be displayed in a separate list. So this is going to be making a live change in our database. Okay. And then for active, for the active state, you want to set this as state active. And again, use the action remote tag. So I'm going to just leave both of those visible, minimize this group, and then make sure that they're both inside of a state set and then give it a name. Mine is bookmarked. Yours could be liked, saved, favorites, whatever you need it to be whatever that represents within your app, but just remember the name and try to keep the name somewhat consistent throughout your design document here in XD. And then again, in your database that we're going to be setting up using Notion and throughout the application. So we're trying to just use this one language here. So we're using bookmarked, but for you, like I say, it could be saved, favorited, liked. All right, so when one of our users selects one of our articles, that will then open up the article in its own screen. So again here, let's go through what containers we have. I have a top bar, so this is container top bar. And what this has is my back button. So if I open this up, you can see I have a back button here. And again, because this is a path that I have drawn here using the pen tool, I've given it the tag component SVG. And then I'm also going to tie the action to it to go back. So no matter how the user has gotten to the article, whether it is from the main feed page or from the bookmark list page, it will always go back automatically. This is very similar if you're in prototype mode in XD. For example, if you were to use this previous artboard setting. So wherever you think of using this setting in your prototype, instead, don't use it. You don't need to wire that up. You just use the tag action, go back. Then I have a container with the author's name, photo, the date of the article, that all important kind of hero image to get people's interest and attention. And of course that headline title. And then I have a separate container underneath for the article context. Now, one of the tags I've used here, which is quite important is flexo. This means that even though my text box here in Adobe XD is only set to be this height, which is probably about 10 rows, this will flex. So depending on how much content is in the database for the length of this article, this will flex and grow and expand to show the exact amount of copy that we actually have. So we don't need to worry about making it the correct size here in our design document. It will, however, stick to the width that we have here. So the width of the text box, that will stay as is. It's just that height, that length of the text box that will change using the Flexo tab. I've then added a couple of buttons here just for fun. And this uses the exact same technique as this bookmark button that I showed you on the main feed page. So if you were doing a like button, for example, I've got this heart here, you would use the tags state set, and then I've called this one like. So you can see I've got my bookmarked one that I made before in the middle here. This one is called like, and again, inside I have my active state. So this is where the heart is set to be filled in pink. And we have the default state, which is just a gray outline. So I have both of them here 
And again, I've used those tags state active and state default. Now I haven't added the remote action tag here because I'm not actually recording in the database whether the user has liked an article or not, but that might be something that you want to do. So that is where you would do that. And then we have our share button. So we've got the tag here, action share, and this will bring up the native share dialog. So whether the user is on Android or iOS natively, it will just show that pop up for you. Now, moving on to our bookmarks screen, you can see in the nav bar here, I have changed the icon to make sure that the bookmark is filled here in a color. And I've also added a few tags up in the artboard name. So I've added a refresh pull. So this is when you pull down on the screen to do that pull to refresh. And I've also added state default and I've given this screen a name. So I've just called it BM for short, but if we want to be consistent, we could call this bookmarks. But you need to make sure that when you're naming the different states, you keep that name consistent. So this is the default view of how my bookmarks screen is going to look. We have the app name here and we have our heading so that our users know what screen they're on as well as obviously that being indicated in the navigation bar. And I have this container here with a preview of this bookmarked article. So my container here is very similar to the one on the home screen feed, but I've just edited the components so that the view of it is more compact. I have my article title here, again, using that flexo box. And you can see that I've said headline goes here. So I know that these will very comfortably fit over three lines. But again, if it needs to expand, it can do. I've then got space for the author's name. We've got the read time. Now, the reason I have put uh, read and then the actual timing of that in separate text boxes here is because I want this. This is just the label, right? And then the five minutes, the timing, this is what I am pulling from the database. You could, if you wanted to, divide this to be a separate text box for just the numeric value and then another text box for the value, whether that's minutes, hours or seconds. I've just done it this way because that's how I entered the information into my database. I then also have an image and I've named this bind image here as a little reminder to myself. Top tip, it just helps you see where everything is when you're binding it in Bravo. Then we have our same bookmark button here. However, this time it is the opposite way around. So for this screen, the default state, if I turn off this group, you'll see is actually filled in purple because for one of these articles to be displaying in this screen, it means that we have already saved and bookmarked this article that we want to go back and read it, or maybe we're just saving it for later. So for here, for this screen, this means this is the default state. And then of course we have the action remote. This might be that we've gone in and read it. We're going to remove it from our bookmarks. You could alternatively create a delete button and use a uh, trash can icon or an X icon to do the same thing. Uh, but essentially it is just the opposite way around. So the default state here, as I say, is filled and the active state, which would mean that it is not bookmarked, then this would remove this article from our bookmarked list. And all we would need to do is pull down on the screen to a refresh because we've added that refresh pull tag in the artboard name. So that is everything I have for our bookmarks slash favorites slash liked list. And then you'll see over here, I've basically duplicated the same screen and I have removed that container that has the article details. And you'll see this screen here just has the container top bar. So they're exactly the same. Then I have a separate container and this just contains the area. So that is the rectangle that doesn't have any properties, doesn't need a border, fill or, or any uh, transparency. Then I have our error message. So you have no bookmarks yet. And I've also kept our little bookmarked icon there too. Now for this to show up, it means that this list is going to be empty. So this is where the artboard state tags really come in useful. So remember on our bookmark screen here, we added state default, okay? For the next screen over here, when we have nothing in this list, we're going to use state empty and then the same name. So I used BM. So you can see here, I've got state empty BM. 
This means that when Bravo does the API call to get the information from our Notion database, it's getting a zero result. It's not getting an array back from the Notion database because it is empty. So therefore, we want to let the users know that, hey, you actually haven't saved any bookmarks yet. Go and add some bookmarks and then you'll see them displayed here. So the next thing that we need to do is go into prototype mode and set the home screen. This way, Bravo knows which screen it needs to display first. So once we've gone through the login, once it has shown that notification screen once, this is the screen that will be shown. Now from this screen, we want to make it so that if our user clicks on the article to read it, they are taken to our article screen. So I've added this link to the title and also the image. I wouldn't advise adding this prototype link to the area rectangle because it would conflict with the buttons that we've got here. Because if you imagine this tap space, this whole square is going to send you to this screen, but these smaller squares are going to try and do the remote actions. So therefore you might get a little bit of a conflict there. The other connection we need from our main home feed screen is to go to the bookmark screen from the navigation bar. So with that button selected, I have just drag and dropped that link onto our bookmark screen here. Then of course, from our bookmarks list, we need to make sure that we link the article to the article view screen so they can read what it is they're interested in. And those are the only links you need to create so that the items in the list can go to the full screen article. So once you have finalized your screen design, added all of those Bravo tags, it is time to use the Bravo Studio plugin and create or update your project. Once you've logged into Bravo Studio and you're in your dashboard, you'll see your project appear here. And then we can see all of our screens are there as well. Now we know all of our screens have synced successfully. It is time to test our design using Bravo Vision on our device. So from the dashboard here, I'm going to select our project. I can skip our notifications. And I've also added a link for myself so that I can sign in without having to go through socials. This was just a little shortcut I added. And I've already connected things up. I'm going to show you how to do this in the next video. So be sure to come back and see how you can use Notion as your database. But this is all working as expected. And I can bookmark something. Let's do this one because it's a new year and we need to set some resolutions here. Let's have a look. Maybe this one as well. And if I go over to my bookmarks screen, I can see them here saved and ready for me to read with a cup of coffee. Now you know how to design your very own clone and exactly which Bravo tags to use. Be sure to come back for part two where I'll be showing you how you can use Notion as your database. We'll set up all of the API connections and I'll go through with you step by step how we can actually make that bookmarking favoriting, liking, functionality, amend the database live so that it's reflecting exactly what you have saved. That's it from me. Let me just wish you again a very happy new year. Bye.